Iya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ciao boy sang. Good morning to all participants for webinar P2A Ice Cream 2021 on international course with creative media. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Rizka Alia, who will be MC on this webinar. Okay, uh, in this webinar, we have two sessions. In the first session, we have Dr. Azira Hussein, a senior lecturer at the School of Creative Industry Management and Performing Arts, University Utara, Malaysia. And the second session, we have Ms. Du Daisy, we as a guest lecturer in the Tan University, Vietnam. Okay. Uh, and welcome to Mr. Jaron Skettler, uh, who... Uh, who say something to all participants in this webinar. Uh, Mr. Jaron Skettler. Time and screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? I'm, I'm just... Loud, loud and clear, Jeroen. Good morning, Herman. Good morning, everyone. I am just dropping in uh, this morning uh, because I know you have a session on the P2A ice cream. Um, I remember not too long ago, a few weeks ago, um, I saw this logo from P2A ice cream coming by and it made me smile. I thought it was fun. I thought it was creative and I thought it set the tone or what seems to be an amazing program. I understand that today you have 150 students from seven countries in the Asian region who are coming together. Now, I know this is online, and I know that online always has limitations, but imagine this without online. We wouldn't meet at all in these two years. This gives us an opportunity to still connect, to still reach out to each other, to study together, hopefully have fun together, and most of all, to become friends to make this a solid Asian, Asian region. So I'm just dropping by to say hi. I um, would like to congratulate all the partners for putting this together. Um, say hi to all the students. Hope you have a wonderful time. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Let's have photo, Kika. Maybe we can have photo with Mr. Jeroen and... Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. And <laughs> Let's do... Uh, 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 a quick... Uh, uh, I Miss Daisy, how is it? Freestyle photo sessions. Okay, ready? Okay. Yes, Kika, can you lead the photo session? Can okay, you come? Uh, right, right. Okay. Smile. Okay. Your best smile. Everyone, please open your camera. Okay, uh, again? Maybe, Maybe again? again? One, again? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you, Jeru. Thank you very much. I hope have, you an, have a nice day. <laughs> nice day. Thank you very much. Have fun, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jeru. Thank you. I stay a little bit online, Herman, if that is okay. Just yes, to, thank just... you. We'll be happy to have you around. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Now, uh, beside me, we have a moderator. His name is Rizky Wahyudi. He was born in Pekanbaru, Rio, Indonesia. He has become a freelance photographer and videographer while pursuing a bachelor degree in communication at Universitas Islam Indonesia and while studying for a master degree in culture and media studies at Gajah Mada University. He also had an internship as a photojournalist at Harian Jogja newspaper and was also involved in several other photography project. Currently, Rizky is interested in, fo in phone photography and cycling. Okay, Mr. Rizky, the time and screens are, are yours. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, good morning everyone. I feel happy in front of you all today. I will be more, I will be moderator today in front of you all and we have to discussion about about our uh, event today back again at ice cream 20 sorry back again to at ice cream 2021 an international course on creative media inspiring the world with the creative production okay 
and today we have to discussion. Uh, firstly, we discuss about AR Convo Photo UUM experience in virtual con convocation with Dr. Azira, Dr. Azira Hussein. Secondly, we talking about rule of right. People message time with Miss Du Daisy Bui. And before we start our webinar, uh, I will give you some information. Uh, maybe it's about the rule our discussion. The first, uh, the speaker will be share the topic for two, two for 45 minutes. After this, I will open the Q&A session. And when the speaker presenting the topic, I hope the the audience if you have any question you can write the question in the chat box and after the speaker tell his topic i i will give the time and space to to the audience who want to ask something to the speaker okay i i think this uh, we we can open the first discussion about today uh, we discussion about uh, AR Convo Photo UUM experience in virtual convocation with Dr. Adira. Before we start our discussion, I think I I will to introduce doc, about uh, Dr. Adira. Uh, wait, uh, Dr. Adira is currently a senior lecturer at the School of Creative Industry Management and Performing Arts University Utara Malaysia. She obtained her bachelor degree in digital medium from Multimedia University in 2004. Uh, master degree in visual communication and new media from University Technology Mara in 2008. And eight, sorry, and her doctoral degree in information technology from Murdoch University Perth, Australia in 2020. Uh, I think it is time for Dr. Azira to give us about your topic and I hope the audience will be enjoy this topic okay thank you, thank you Mr. Rizky Wahyudi um, actually the, the voice was breaking and I could really uh, hear what you said just now but I I, 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 I assume that you have uh, introduced me so well thank you so much for the introduction Okay, uh, good morning uh, to all the committees uh, from U UEE, friends from DTU, and uh, Mr. Jeroen and students. Morning, Dr. Hello, everyone. How are you Babu guys doing Babu today? Babu I hope that you guys are doing well and enjoy the ice cream program that have been prepared for you so far. And I'm sure that you have learned a lot uh, and be prepared for the next phase, yeah? Which is the group project, am I right? The group project, and after that, you'll be ready for the exhibition. Uh, you know, uh, it will be so much fun to work together with friends from other country where you can learn about other culture, and also it's a great opportunity for networking as well, yeah. Uh, it's always good to meet new friends internationally and enjoy the time together to create amazing and creative projects to inspire the world. Okay, so let me introduce myself. For that, I'll share my screen. All right. Um, okay, my name is Azira Hussein. I am from the School of Creative Industry and Performing Arts in University Utara, Malaysia. Okay, today we will spend uh, about 40 to 45 minutes together and the topic that I will be sharing with you guys today is AR Convo Photo, UUM Experience in Virtual Convocation. Uh, actually, it's not a real convocation. It's the, it is an application that you can uh, uh, wear a convocation rope using AR Convo Photo. Okay, so um, AR is augmented reality. Okay. 
for those who um, uh, I'm sure that some of you have heard about this technology. Uh, so let us see, what do you know about AR or augmented reality? So could you please scan the QR code in the screen? Okay, and then you can uh, or you can type the link uh, below. The link below and then give me your opinion about uh, the meaning of AR. You can write something in one word or anything as long as it's not more than three words. Can everyone scan the QR code? Are you guys okay? Oh, I, I think I need to open the chat, the chat box, All right? If you can, if you can scan the QR code, please uh, type 333. Three. Okay, <laughs> I can see that the Herman uh, have type three, three, three. What about others? Yeah, the Fita. Sorry, I, I think I need to stop sharing for a while. Wait, yeah. Okay, I give you like one minute to write down what you think about AR. Only three words, Dr. Azira? Yep, one or three words. <laughs> okay, let us see from here. Okay, I can see uh, a few answers already. Let me share. Okay, some of you have right reality, okay, technology. Overlaying 3D application, yes. I don't know. Someone, someone right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Unreal, virtual, interactive. But just then, then people uh, answer the question. I think there's a, a hundred and fifty of you in the room right now. Where are you guys? What are you guys doing? I hope you're not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Still opening the link, Dr. Azira. Oh, okay, okay. That's all right. Okay, I can see technology, reality technology. Oh, what, what is this? To, to have the fruit. Oh, maybe that's language that I don't know. German, probably. Yeah. <laughs> A visionary involvement. Okay. Okay, thank you for your answer. But uh, as we can see in the word cloud here, I think most probably uh, everyone have known the answer is about technology, it's about reality, virtual reality. Okay, I'll, 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 sh I'll uh, share with you what is the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality uh, after this, okay? So let us go to the... Okay, thank you for your answer. Okay, so uh, unlike the full immersion of virtual reality, augmented reality aims to make the world you see 
so much cooler. There are three types of augmented reality, which is the marker base, markerless, and location. Okay, let me sh uh, share with you how marker base works. Uh, marker base uh, augmented reality is a digital information is laid onto the actual physical world. Okay, your camera here, if you have camera, detects a target image like this, your cat or your dog probably. And then uh, it can figure out how close or far and what angle the target image is from your camera using a sensor. Okay, it then projects digital information onto your onto the target image and you can get the augmented reality. Okay, so how many of you here have ever used the Snapchat? I'm sure everyone use Snapchat, yeah, because all the youngsters nowadays they mostly have this app. Okay, let me show you. My, my Snapchat. Okay, so can you see the Snapchat here? Can you see my face? Yes. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, okay. So here in uh, in Snapchat, you can see uh, Snapchat uses the facial recognition. They they recognize my face as a target image. Okay. So now that it comes to the track, uh, have something they can track. It can project digital information on my face like this. Ta-da! Something like this. It can be cat. It can be anything you want in this Snapchat. Okay, so uh, tag, uh, target image is uh, our face and uh, the Snapchat will use, um, will project digital information on our face. Okay, so that's basic uh, of marker-based augmented reality. All right. For the next uh, is the markerless AR. Okay, markerless AR is the uh, the in uh, technology now. Uh, the user has to scan the horizontal surface like floor or table, and in some cases they have to scan the vertical surface as well, such as the wall. Okay, then the system will analyze the environment to find correlation and differences between pixels and then defines virtual coordinates related to the real environment. Okay, now let me show you example of markerless AR used in application called IKEA Place. Hey, IKEA would like everyone to know. Can you hear the, the audio? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hey, IKEA would like everyone to know. The sound about place our new augmented reality app built on Apple's new AR kit. You can easily place two to scale 3D models of IKEA furniture in your place. Scan, browse, select, move, and place. So that could mean less of this and less of this. And probably more of this. We want to make it easier for people everywhere to imagine a better place. Share this place and this place. Try place in your place. Yes! All right, interesting, isn't it? Actually, we can do something like that as well for our project. Okay, 
So uh, just now I show you what is marker base, uh, what is markerless AR, and also the last one is location based AR. Location based AR, okay, like this. Uh, it ties augmented reality content to a specific location. They use the GPS, okay. Uh, okay. For example, if imagine yourself walking in a city street that you are not familiar with. For example, like uh, Dr. Herman go to Ho Chi Minh City <laughs> and trying to look for toilet, maybe. Okay, so. Uh, you just you can just use your phone camera and you can see the virtual road sign displaying the street name. Uh, this one we call it as a location based AR. See, you just uh, it was not uh, the 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 street name the the sign is not there. But if you use your camera uh, to the to the real location, it will come out. Uh, the the sign will come out and you know okay this way is for the coffee shop uh, this is the uh, that way for the toilet okay so you can do this you can do this uh, for your uh, own city maybe you can uh, promote tourism to Jakarta and something uh, maybe in Malaysia people come to Changlun and uh, how to go to uh, CMAT, <laughs> okay. I think uh, the students from UM know CMAT very well. Okay, it also uh, allows you to navigate to your destination with direction displayed right on top of the physical road in front of you. Okay. Uh, another one that I think also be familiar with a simple example of location base. Uh, I think most of you have used this is Pokemon Go. Okay, how many of you here uh, have played Pokemon Go? <laughs> my 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 son used to play using my phone before this. It was like uh, two years, three years before. If you ha have used uh, Pokemon Go, uh, type one 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 in the chat box. Pokemon Go, I was. <laughs> okay. It was fun, right? We can go touring around the campus and, and try to catch the Pokemon and everything. Okay. Uh, right. So, I guess that's enough for some introduction uh, about what is uh, augmented reality. Uh, so, we can go back to the real topic that I want to share with you. Uh, which is the AR Convo Photo. Okay, what is this application all about? Okay, uh, everybody knows that during uh, the end of 2019 and 2020, uh, in the beginning of 2020, uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic have started, okay? So due to the COVID-19 pandemic, University Utara Malaysia, and I, I'm sure that other university uh, in the globally, in the uh, all the university in the world, uh, not able to conduct the convocation ceremony. Uh, but I think in uh, in Australia, Perth, Australia, they don't have this problem because they don't they have zero case in in Perth, Australia. So a few uh, university there, they have they still have the uh, the convocation like like normal one. Okay, so uh, University of Tarawa Malaysia is not able to conduct the convocation ceremony. Uh, since graduation photo, graduation photo are uh, important and something to be cherished. So the, the students, they really want to have the convocation because they have finished study and they want something to, to as uh, uh, they want to wear the rope uh, of the convocation rope. Okay, so uh, the team from Skimpa come out with this project. Uh, they try to solve the problem. They try to let the students wear their virtual, uh, their graduation robe. Okay, 
by using the application, the student will be able to take photos of themselves anywhere, anytime, uh, wearing their virtual graduation robe. Okay, so this is the application, the UUM AR Convo Photo application. Uh, actually, the, uh, we have a different version of, uh, app, uh, of the application. We have for the PhD, we also have for the degree student and uh, for master students as well. So different version and it will be, uh, they can download it from their students portal. So uh, if the students uh, graduate from PhD, they will get the, uh, the PhD version of the application. All right. So using this application, uh, we will be able to take photos and superimpose the virtual image of graduation rope like this. Uh, I think you can see uh, my, my face over here. <laughs> I also try to use the application. Uh, the rope here, you can see if it, they have like three lines over here is for the PhD. This color, these two lines is for the master's students. So we have different kind of rope. Uh, and also the, the scarf, uh, I, I'm not sure what the name of this scarf called, but we have different colors for different um, school, okay? Different school. We use this uh, augmented uh, reality technology, okay? Students from various schools have different level of education, undergraduate, masters and PhD. So uh, different virtual graduation ropes are prepared uh, to suit the requirement, okay? So students just select uh, which level of education and which school, uh, then the rope will be ready for them. They can proceed to take photos of themselves wearing the virtual graduation rope. Okay. Okay, what, what fun uh, about this? uh virtual graduation rope is that uh, you can take your photos uh, many times okay for example if you go to graduation day uh the the photographer will just take photo of you one or two pictures only right and but with the ar photo combo you can you can do it many times and also you can save it and you can print it and then you can share it with uh, your family uh, and mem uh, friends and also share it in your social media. Okay, I, I, I like to show you the demonstration of uh, this application. Okay, so uh, this is the, the, the icon of AR Convo Photo for PhD. Okay, and then, okay, you can see the, uh, the, the front here. Uh, we can see start gallery or exit so we just click start and then we can choose which rope uh, you you want okay which rope you want and then, uh, <laughs> then okay for example if you are a girl so you can choose the 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 one with holding the flowers and so and another one male you can use the the on the right on the left side okay so you click uh, the the female for example okay so uh, we have here so uh, from this screen you can like uh, zoom in and out to to make sure that your face is in the room I don't have models for today, so sorry. Um, uh, if if not, I can show you. 
I'll be the maybe I can call my 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 roommate. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Okay. Can you can you do this for me and I'll be the model? Okay. Yes. Uh, all right so and then you can open the gallery oh sorry and you get <laughs> looks great uh, i think uh, it should be <laughs> not like this Okay, uh, okay, just delete it. <laughs> okay, so that is how you use the AR combo photo. You guys have any question to ask? No question yet? Okay, so uh, that was the, the demon demonstration of AR combo photo. Um, this advice for you, for you guys in the ice cream program, uh, this augmented reality ma uh, market is growing and developing. This technology is evolving rapidly and it creates the new level of experience uh, so there are a lot of cool and interesting projects that you guys can work on this technology, okay? Uh, this technology is big in, in uh, like gaming, e-commerce, tourism, okay? retail industry, and a lot more than that we can think of, lah, okay? So maybe you can create apps that can be used in retail industry. For example, you can uh, let the you, customer to try on glasses, for example, or dresses, or maybe create AR for tourism, like I said just now, uh, tourism in Jakarta, for example, cities in Vietnam, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, or any other place in the world. All right. Okay, I will show you the proper one, the demonstration of AR combo photo. Just now, it, it was fail one. <laughs> okay, let me find it. Okay. Uh, at uh, and then for the time being, maybe you can uh ask me question that I can answer. Doctor, what's, what's the challenge, Mr. Risky? The question is, what's the challenge of uh, developing these kind of apps? You know, can yeah, the, cha uh, the, the, the challenge is that as they, as you can see uh, here is, uh, we need to really check everything. We want you want to. Uh, have the the skin tone, for example, because we have have dif uh, different backgrounds of students, right? Uh, if we can see in the photo, uh, maybe the hands are quite fair. So for those students uh, who have fair skin color, it will match you. But how how about the other we have uh, other other students that have a uh, dark skin color or chocolate skin color? Uh, something like that. So we need to take take consideration for that lah. All right. And then uh, for those who ask about uh, what, uh, how how we do this using what application we use, uh, uh, we use Unity Unity application. Okay, I want to show you this video.
Okay. Can you give me a one second, please? I already opened it just now, but I think it just um, <laughs> miss or go somewhere else. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I cannot find it. Uh, the the video is not here, but it's okay. Uh, maybe I will share to you guys later in the ah. Uh, it's here already. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so this is the uh, video uh, tutorial for using AR Convo Photo. I, I hope you guys can have a look how it use how to use it. I'll share again. There you go. For the students that they have that have used this application, they find it really uh, they, they really love it. They say it uh, because they can uh, share it with uh, family and friends. Their picture of uh, convocation rope, even though they cannot have the the real convocation. And then uh, this application is uh, also we we use it for we have uh, use it for other university as well and we we, we pro, pro, not produce we we cater the service for other university who wanted to do a, a virtual convocation. So the team from uh, UUM we use AR Convo Photo for the students photo for the virtual convocation and it is also like a, a money making uh, projects okay all right i think uh, that's all from me uh, that's all my sharing for today 
if uh, if you want to uh, get in touch with me, maybe you can send me emails uh, at the my emails here uh, at zero two three one zero gmail dot com. Or do you have anything to ask me, or you want to collaborate with me, or anything? Uh, please contact me via this uh, email address. All right. So uh, before I stop, uh, uh, Mr. Risky, is thing uh, anything you want to ask me or any question? Okay, okay. Th thank you, Dr. Azira. I think this is very interesting to ask to discussion about AR. AR, I think, is yes. the creative idea for us. If the participant interest about uh, the project our what our what our will do today for some days after this discussion or is this webinar we will uh, some participant who can do this idea uh, yes, yes. I think this is uh, a, time for us a lot to of, a lot of uh, a lot of other different and creative project not just for uh, convocation or anything maybe they can try markerless uh, AR, Marcellus AR, like uh, the IKEA place just now. Maybe they can also try the location, uh, uh, location AR as well for uh, tourism tourism projects. It will be very very interesting to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think this uh, the ses the next session. This. Is uh, the Q and A question, yeah, Q and A session. I think the participant who want to ask some question can raise your hand or maybe um, write your question in the chat box, and I will moderate the participant who want to ask question and to give you and want to give you some times and screen to to you to. Uh, ask your question. Okay, I think we have a question from Dr. Herman Felani. Yes, the question is how can we use the IR technology in creative media such as photography, vlog, and some other media? Ah, oh, that was a very interesting question and quite challenging, Dr. Herman. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can use uh, for we can use it in uh, in vlog uh, anything we can have like uh, for for the the thing that I think in my mind now is about uh, tourism. Okay, so for example, we can use uh, AR uh, for in vlog that that share about interesting location in uh, in. Uh, any cities or something, and uh, they can use AR, you know. Uh, like photography, I'm not quite sure about that. Maybe because because this is actually a photography thing, you know. For example, like before this, we used to have a, a studio for convocation uh, photo in UUM. Each time we have a convocation ceremony, we will set up a studio next to the, the hall, the convocation hall. And then all the students, after their, their session, they will come down and then we we'll have a few photographers and we, uh, we take pictures of them and their family. Uh, and then we'll post the photo to them. But now, because we cannot have the the physical uh, studio, we create this uh, AR combo photo for uh, digital photography, but not just for uh, convocation, also for other award uh, ceremony, for example, like uh, Hari uh, Anugrah Cemerlang, what do we call it? Like award, award night, right? So, we can have uh, uh, the 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 VC standing uh, VC standing there, and then we we just hold uh, a marker there. For example, hold this the certificate, 
and then we can have picture like I'm taking the certificate from the VC, but actually I just hold hold the 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 cert in the studio only. So this is like a photography thing, lah. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I hope I I answered your question, Dr. Herman. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Alira. Uh, hmm. Uh, and then uh, we can use this uh, AR application uh, in iPhone, also in Android. Okay, uh, just to let you guys know that um, uh, we need uh, iOS version 11 and up, and then iPhone 6s uh, or anything newer. And then for Android version, uh, we I think it's. 4.4 and up, uh, Samsung A7 and uh, other newer devices lah. So when we created the application using Unity, we have to set whether we want to use this uh, for Android or for uh, iPhone. Okay, uh, but the AR combo photo that we developed it's just for Android. Uh, so sorry for all the iPhone users. <laughs> they cannot use this application. Uh, it's just for Android like my phone here. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Riz. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Alira. Uh, I will, if you want to ask some question, I think you, you can write the question in the column chat. But yeah. uh, I think uh, I, I can hmm? also answer their question through chat uh, box as well after this. I'll be here until the end of the program. Okay. Maybe maybe I think it is the best choice and I think we we can do the next uh, discussion but if you want to something make you feel so asking to about the doc, Dr. Alira, you, you will uh, write on the column and ch chat column and after the, in the end the session, I, I can write again to Dr. Alira. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, at, at the next, uh, we can do the sharing this sharing session with Miss Dai, Miss Du Dai Sibui. Uh, with the topic rule of right people message and time and before we start our discussion i think uh, give the biography about mr Day miss daisy sorry miss daisy to us i hope uh, the participant can be can be know about uh, biography of miss daisy okay uh, Miss Daisy, Miss Do Do Daisy Bui is currently the assistant to Dean and guest lecturer at Hospitality and Tourism Institute, Doi Tan University, Vietnam. She holds a master yeah. degree in commerce in Australia and bachelor degree in psychology in Vietnam. With the passion toward youth empowerment, she has er her experience filled with various regional non-profit projects in a blend domain of culture, diversity, and sustainability. Serve as a, the board member in many student community in Vietnam and Australia since 2015. She aims to initiate the ASEAN Plus 6 Youth Networking and Collaboration to ultimately deliver great impact towards communities. Okay, I think uh, this time for Miss Du, Miss Du Daisy, uh, I think you can uh, give us some many, some many, many question. Uh, sorry, some, some many, some many your experience about your topic today. Okay, the time and space I give to you, Miss Daisy. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you, Dr. Azira, for the very informative and uh, engaging sharing. And good morning, everyone, PTA University partners, lecturers, and uh, our beloved students. 
Warmest greeting from Yutong University, Vietnam. I hope that you're having a great time with the P2A Ice Cream Program 2021. My name is Daisy. I'm the Assistant to Dean and the Guest Lecturer from the Hospitality and Tourism Institute, Yutong University. And uh, also, I'm currently a co-founder of a creative adventure, an international creative agency startup. I'm so happy and I'm excited to be the speaker for the P2A Ice Cream 2021 with the team International Course on Creative Media. Okay, please allow me to uh, share my screen. Can you, Daisy? I cannot because I'm the participant. Uh, please take me as a co-host. Thank you. Yeah, I could say it now. Thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah. So for today's topic, I would like to talk about the rule of rights, right people, right message, and right time. I know that many of you would think that creativity is something that out of the box, why there's a rule here. And yes, that is correct. And there are so many approaches towards the definition of creativity nearly 500 million results on Google in less than one second. And for me, my approach toward creativity is truly inspired by um, two people that I guess most of you would know, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. So creativity is about connecting things and it allows people to be effective. So throughout my sharing, effective creative media is about delivering the right message to the right people and at the right time. Okay, so let's get into the rule of rights. So in more detail, right people would answer the question, who is your audience? Who is willing to pay? And right message is about what you are selling and the reason to make people pay for your products and services. And finally, right time. When is the perfect time to release or promote your products? or the perfect timing to convince people to make the decision real quick as soon as they see the advertisement. All good? Okay, let's explore the first one, right, people. So I'm a big fan of storytelling, so I'm going to use all the real case businesses to go through the rule of rights. And for the first one, right, people, let's talk about the case of Starbucks, the world's largest coffee house chain. Can anyone guess which market this Starbucks fell several years ago? No, 10 years ago, the face must one. If you know, please type in the chat box or unmute yourself. Okay, I'm waiting, which market? You can guess, uh, just, just random. Okay, I think I'm going to tell. So Starbucks failure could be seen in Australia as two, uh, two thirds of the total Starbucks stores in Australia was closed in 2008. And similarly in Vietnam, Starbucks failed to compete with the local brands, only has less than 3% of the total coffee market share. And those failures could be explained by the mismatch between the Starbucks target audience, a target customer profile, and the Aussie Vietnamese coffee consumers. In other words, wrong people in the Starbucks marketing strategy. So what's wrong? Let's watch a video for the answer. Starbucks has coffee shops all over the world. There are more than 28,000 locations in 76 markets, from Shanghai to Guantanamo Bay. And in China, a new Starbucks location opens up every 15 hours. But there is one continent that seems uninterested in the hype over the Seattle-based coffee chain. And that continent is Australia. It's proven to be one of the toughest markets in the world to break into. So tough, in fact, that Starbucks closed more than two thirds of its stores on the continent back in 2008. So what went so wrong with Starbucks in Australia? To answer that, let's go back to July of 2000, when Starbucks opened its first Australian shop in Sydney. 
From there, it expanded fast. By 2008, Starbucks had 87 stores across the continent. I think one of the problems for Starbucks, and it's true for a lot of businesses that have been successful in one country, is that they thought that their business model could just roll out uh, to a different environment and there was no need for them to adjust. But that was the problem. It tried to grow the empire too fast. Starbucks rapidly opened up multiple locations instead of slowly integrating them into the Australian market. When they launched, they launched too rapidly and didn't give the Australian consumer an opportunity to really develop an appetite for the Starbucks brand. They also moved into regional areas, into um, outer suburbs of major cities. And so for the Australian consumer, it was almost like it was too available for them. And so there wasn't this point of difference, this want, this need for Starbucks, and it wasn't an organic growth, which is what we very much saw in the US. In its first seven years in Australia, Starbucks accumulated $105 million in losses. By 2007, Starbucks Australia was hanging on by a thread, taking big loans from the US, totaling up to $54 million. And in 2008, Starbucks announced it was shutting down 61 stores. But of course, 2008 was a difficult time for businesses due to the financial crisis. Along with the Australia closures, Starbucks also closed 600 underperforming American stores. But even still, such a retreat in Australia was embarrassing for the brand. When you're shutting down 75 stores, um, for the Australian uh, consumer, when they, when they did leave the market, um, or at least a large number of their stores were shut down, they didn't really care. It's partly because Australians are spoiled for choice when it comes to coffee. Australia's coffee market is one of the biggest in the world. The industry is expected to hit more than $6 billion in total revenue in 2018. They've been immersed in nuances of cafe culture since the mid-1900s, when Italian and Greek immigrants began traveling to the country. The immigrants introduced Australians to espresso. By the 1980s, Australians were fully engulfed in cafe culture. They've also grown accustomed to specialty menu items, like a flat white or an Australian macchiato. So cafes in Australia were born out of like the Italian culture of, um, you know, meeting a friend and knowing your local barista and it being kind of like a local meeting place where everyone knew each other and that coffee was just a part of that. And then Starbucks came in with what is more of an American style, like coffee culture, which is essentially just like coffee is a product, coffee is a commodity, coffee is like, like perk me up in the morning, it's caffeination. Starbucks had a basic menu and offered more sugary drinks, which most Australians... So uh, you just watched um, a part of the video about Starbucks Australia. And the biggest reason is a conflict between the coffee culture of America and the Australia. So American coffee consumer, they regard coffee as a product, the pick and go, and they prefer self-service, uh, self sweet taste, sugar, and frappuccino. But in Australia, they prefer the local coffee shop, the dining, the socializing, with the bitter taste of coffee and flat wine. So even with those mismatches, Starbucks still keeps its American style in marketing and has not adapted to the coffee culture in Australia. And as a result, the majority of market share is still held by the local coffee shops. And the same reasons are true for Vietnamese market. Vietnamese people, we prefer to drink coffee at the local shop on street, uh, we socialize with friends and we growing up with the more robust style coffee taste contrasting to the Arabica taste from Starbucks. And the same problems could be seen in Burger King in Vietnam, Dunkin' Donut in India, and 7-Eleven in Indonesia. So the first one, Vietnamese people, the, our eating habit is veggie oriented and street food consumption. That's why a burger is never our option for breakfast or lunch and absolutely not for dinners as we eat at home with family at night. So here are the main points for profiling the right people for an effective marketing campaign. The first one is geography, where the consumer is living and growing up really impacts their taste and also the availability of the products. So more substitutes, higher level of competitions, and more effort need to be made 
for the marketing and communications. And second, so buying behavior. If the target consumer is dependent on family for financial support, the communications should be direct to family or group values and experience instead of merely product consumptions. And similarly, if they are savvy buyers who is conscious in buying decisions, try to convince them with informative strategy. And if the consumer are tech savvy, our student millennials do something with the social media tricks and they will help us with the digital word of mouth effect. And the most important ones is culture and values. For a company which is planning to expand to a new market, researching about culture is a must. So taking the example of Starbucks, from Vietnam to Australia and to America, the level of collectivism decreased. And similarly, the level of uncertainty avoidance also decreased. That means we avoid to take risks and um, we just consume our familiar product as a habit. And in the meanwhile, power distance increased. So in the ASEAN cultures, family have the power in buying decision. But in America, as a Western country, they are individualists that can make the decision by themselves. And as far as uh, if we know the culture of the target audience, the way we communicate would be effective. And as far as creativity is on the right track. So that is for the Australia and Vietnamese market. However, how about another one? In different scenario, Starbucks, they've been succeeding in the China market as the way they choose the target audience and the way they deliver the message in their communication campaign are a good match or we could say that they deliver the right message to the right people. So how could they do that? They are truly inculturated by the Chinese tradition and they position themselves as the neighbor of the customer, not the sellers or the product provider, but the neighbor. They connect to the transparency, the dignity and respect, a perfect match for the Confucius values of China. So let's move on to another example to explore the second right, right message in more detail. So um, anyone can guess uh, where are those people and what they are buying. If you know where are they, uh, just type in the chat box. Or uh, Herman, if you can guess, uh, just make a guess where are they. Herman, please. They are in a hotel. So, so what, what are they buying? What, what, what do you buy when you go to a hotel, Herman? Service? Service? Maybe rooms, maybe, I don't know. You want to conduct a meeting or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can we say that in the advertisement, like, hey, please stay in our hotel. Please choose us. We will sell you the service. Can we say that? We sell you the service. No, yeah. no. All right. Yeah. So that's not the thing that someone works in the creative industry would say. But instead, those people, they love to convert everything, everything into values and experience. OK, so uh, I prefer some. Just check them out. So when we're talking about location, so we would say something related to, related to convenience or safety and for a five star hotel. We will mention safety again and also the status. And how about the hotel brand? We emphasize the personality and the lifestyle in our promotions. And for additional services like spa or gym, we talk about balance and we highlight relaxation, okay? And for local activities, like in Vietnam, we will say like, we will take you to a, uh, uh, a Vietnamese food, something. So it's about excitement and story. And last but not least, the customer service. You may need to communicate something about the recognition or self-fulfillment to the audience. And for each consumer segment, we will target different messages. For example, 
for a group of consumers, uh, the Vietnamese consumers, depending on the tour guide for the trip in China, we will choose the first one to talk about in our marketing convenience and safety. Uh, for the middle 40s to 50s who are looking for a weekend trip, uh, we were talking about balance and relaxations. And for young millennial Western guests who want to experience new culture, we will choose excitement. And there are so many more values and experience that a creative agent can communicate to the audience. And my top one favorite is the hotel by a uh, hotel and gallery by Sofitel, the hotel of the Art Corps uh, International Hotel, who sells the story. Um, they have such an awesome creative team that want to convert the hotel service into a story. Uh, I really love that idea. So let me show you a video that they talk to the consumer that we sell you a story. <laughs> We're not just hotels, we're more than hotels. We are places with stories, not just stories you write or read, but stories you live. Stories you live here, here or there. Like the story of the Molitor Hotel, birthplace of the bikini in the heart of Paris. Stories selected from around the globe with one thing in common, uniqueness. Places with stories inked on the walls and in every object at each of our 100 hotels. Do the math. Yes, that's a lot of stories. We could tell you each of them, like how the Details Print House in Amsterdam became the Ink Hotel. But instead, how about you come and see, smell, taste, and live them here, here, or there? So, are you ready to write the next chapter with us? M Gallery, stories that stay. So, how many times did they mention the word stories? So, throughout the videos, they talk about story. They don't sell anything. They just tell the story. So all of the hotel staff from the receptionist to the F&B attendant, they not only sell the service, but they tell the story of the values and the culture of the place that the hotel is located. Okay, so here we go, the last one, the right time. So Zoom, everyone knows Zoom, we are using Zoom. So can you guess? When was Zoom established? So which year Zoom was founded? 2019? No? So can you guess which year? I'm sorry, 20? 2009? Okay. So um, Zoom, Zoom was first founded in 2011 but officially launched in 2013. And it took Zoom four years to hit 1 billion valuation in 2017. And then in two years, in 2019, 16 billion. So 16 times by the end of 2019. And can you guess their revenue in 2020 after the COVID-19? From 16 billion to 100 billions and everyone knows the reasons, right? So when the COVID came, everyone stayed at home and work from home. So we need Zoom, we need an online platform to work and study. So good timing is really important. So how can we know when is the good timing? It depends on the level of priority, dependency and substitutes, for example, you could skip veggies for dinner or breakfast if you're busy, you have a meeting and then you could skip breakfast. And you can wait until the Black Friday to buy your favorite Nike shoes. Or you could buy another car brand except Mercedes as you have many options to go. And you also have to save the money for your family or for other purposes. But during the pandemic, you prioritize online working, online study mode for your family and yourself safety. And you depend on the online platform for work and communications. And you only have several options at this time and we have merely no experience with the, um, with the online, on, online life. So at that time, only Google Meet, Skype, Microsoft Team and Zoom. But your university and your company will decide 
which technology for you to use. So Zooms arise at the right time without requesting efforts from the creative team. But do you think that right now they need the advertisement? When we are all working online and study online, they truly do. And not only for Zoom, but on all other products and services need to constantly updating to make sure that they are still relevant to the user need and they arrive at the perfect timing. And as for it, creativity become a must and an ongoing demand to be successful. So this will be the last example for today. So I know that you've been going with uh, Starbucks and um, then hotel and Zoom. Now we go to a, a food, huh? food, a striking example for today. Deliver the right message to the right people at the right time. So the last video, one minute only. Okay. And uh, please watch and let me know what you think. What if we took this cow off the table and just made friends with her? What if this guy grew more plants and we got protein from his beans and peas instead and made a great burger? What if we put it in our cars, on our menus, on our grills, and on our dinner plates? What if just taking the animal out of the meat made us and our planet healthier? What if we all go beyond? Can anyone guess which product is that? Beyond Meat? Can anyone guess? Or any one of you have heard about it? Beyond Meat? Okay, Daffa, I think I, I, I see you. I believe it was uh, some corporation that was initiated on uh, creating um, synthetic meat, I believe. Mm, it was yeah. made of, um, I don't know, plain base. Mm. It, it, it's safe to say it was a plain base meat, mm. I think, because yeah. I have saw real meat somewhere. But yeah, it's pretty much like that, mm, in my yeah. opinion, yeah. Thank you, thank you. That's the correct answer. It's a veggie meat. So it's like the meat, uh, plant-based meat. We, I haven't seen it in Vietnam, but I think in the future, we will have Beyond Meat in our market. Um, I used to, no, I've seen Beyond Meat product in Australia and in some uh, other developing countries who are more vegetarian oriented. What if we- So Beyond Meat is an American vegan meat and they don't target the vegetarian customer. So interestingly, their customer is the one who love to eat meat, who crave meat, but they advocate the animal welfare and the environment sustainability. So in the advertisement that you, you just watch, Beyond Meat highlights those message to build a brand self similarity or they deliver the message to the right audience. And here we go, the good timing. The advertisement was launched in the Lakers versus Dust NBA, an American sport culture, uh, basketball during the COVID-19 time. So who are watching the TV at that time? The American people, as they um, love sport and they love baskets, basketball, so their tradition is to watch the game with family members and friends. And at this stage, everyone stays home because of the COVID-19. Most of the USA citizen was gathering uh, to watch the game. And this one is very tricky. Can you guess what do they have while watching the game? What will they eat while they're watching the game? American thing. Think about some, some brain. So we have Starbucks and what else? What else in American? Nike. No, Ford, come on, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, I don't know, Burger King. Mm, yeah, McDonald's. they have burger. So when we're talking about America, it's will be Starbucks and McDonald's or something. So they eat burger. Now, exactly what Beyond Meat is advertising. So they advertise the burger. Why people 
are eating burger and in the basketball, all the American citizen is watching that one. So they met the rule of rice or uh, even if it was successful or not, so you can have a check on their financial performance after this advertisement. So that's also close my sharing for today. And uh, I hope you have a great time and enjoy the sharing. And I also wish everyone stay safe and keep learning and growing despite the pandemic. We, we cannot delay education. Education can't wait. And today is also the teacher day in Vietnam. On behalf of DTU, I would like to send my best regards to all the university lecturers of this PGA program. Thank you for your dedication, your animal's effort, and your caring for the students. And thank you all. So if you do have any questions, please type in the chat box and I'm, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Okay, thank you, Miss Daisy. I think it is a great presentation and we studied about uh, when we have a product. So when we must uh, promotion or where is the place we can marketing the product. And I think it is a good idea for us because maybe we can do something or create something, but maybe if we distribute the product with the wrong people or maybe wrong place, it is not good idea, I think. Uh, before we do the the Q&A session, I think uh, the our participants, please fill the attendance on the link in the chat box. Yeah, I think it is good for us to collect the data for you all. Okay, uh, we have some question to Miss Daisy uh, uh, from Dr. Azira. What about the choice of product name? In, is it Im important, Mr. Da Ms. Daisy? Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Azira. So I got a, a question from a speaker. So Dr. Azira, what about the choice of product names? Is this important, Daisy? So uh, for me, is it truly important because the name of the product must go with the values that your company is targeting and also the value and experience that you want to deliver to the audience. However, in alignment with the choice of product name, you must go with the very match logo, a matching logo. When we have the visual and the content, visual and content, it creates a perfect match for the brand recognition and the brand image and brand recall in the customer mind. So that is my answer. Thank you. And okay. I think, yeah. Uh, we have a, another question from Dr. Herman Velani. What about Jollibee in Philippines? What make it so popular in Philippines? So Jollibee in Philippines. We also have Jollibee in uh, Vietnam. And um, I must confess that I am. I do not have any experience with the Philippine market. However, I can talk about Jollibee stores in Vietnam. So for the Jollibee store in Vietnam, their targeted audience is the children. And also in Vietnam, huh, we are the communist uh, community value countries. So everything will go with children and the old people. So Jollibee, they are doing the very great job by and they have the, the B, I, I don't know how to describe but someone wearing the clothes of the bee, they, they wear the, the bee costume, and then they wave the children. And in Vietnam, we ride motorbike on the street. So the children, they see that that bee uh, is front of the Choli Bee store every day. And then it creates the brand recognition in their brand. And when they get home, they usually ask the parents, what is that store, what are they selling? and children they do love burger and they do love those stuff so Jollibee is doing very successful in vietnam by targeting the right audience is the children okay and i hope that the answer is helpful 
Okay. Uh, any question from the another participant? Just in the chat. Uh, Zoom. Yeah. Uh, Okay, we have a uh, another question from Miss Ida. Uh, I can write the I can write the question. Miss mm, Nancy, I really love your concept of considering values when you create a product. What about the global the global culture's influence? Let's say K-pop in Vietnam. Do you think we can mix local culture and popular culture, global culture? Yeah, uh, thank you, Nirani, for the question. So I say I could say that the K-pop is very popular in Vietnam, and not only for a reason year, but since I was in uh, grade seven or grade eight, I I already know about K-pop via the uh, the band, the the, the K-pop band like Big Bang or Super Juno. So if you at my age, you will you will know that band. So um. The marketing campaign not only like around the customer, but it also related to the political, the legal, or other um, outsiders' reasons. So to be really inculturated the culture of the country, this is a must have. As I mentioned, the case of Starbucks in China, they're successful because they adopt to the Chinese tradition. But in Vietnam, they fell because they apply the American standards in Vietnam. So a coffee in Vietnam only costs less than one dollars. But Starbucks, they apply the same price, five to six dollars in Vietnam. And in Vietnam, I'm still live with my family, and I'm still have the financial dependence. So I cannot pay for that price of um, Starbucks. So it have to be a mix of globalized and localized in the marketing to get the most effective. However, please considering the political, the economy, or other factors in the marketing campaign. Okay, uh, we can to the next uh, question from Pambudi Pambudi. Yeah. I don't know, but is the message really important than the, the consumer needs, especially if we see the expansion of Gojek in Vietnam with GoFit? Is it success GoFit in Vietnam? Mm, okay, it's a very tricky question so, because GoVit. Uh, GoVit is more famous in the north and the south of Vietnam, and I'm living in the central, so we're using Grab. We, we're not going to use Govik. Huh? And um, I think in Vietnam and other ASEAN countries, we are familiar with motorbike and stuff because of our street sign and so on. So they are more successful than Uber. Yeah, absolutely. But in Vietnam, we do have uh, uh, many competitors in that, um, how can I say, riding share market. So we do have many options. So when we have a lot of substitutes, as I mentioned in my presentation, more substitute, more availability, so more challenging in um, promoting advertisement. So for now, from my understanding, they only compete on price and promotions. And one notable uh, trend today is uh, Shopee. So Shopee is very strong and powerful in Vietnam. So they already occupies the um, Grab already. So they have Shopee, Grab. Mm. So this will be the integration between John um, Company and John Effort. And I think the John Effort, when each party contribute their advantage, will be the future of the economies. Thank you. I hope those hope those answers helpful. Okay, and thank you all the students for your questions and uh, your attention. Okay, uh, I think this interesting for us about Gojek is very popular in Indonesia, and we have some information about Gojek in Vietnam. Yeah. 
Oke. Okay. Uh, I think the participant, if you want to ask something with Dr. Adira or maybe to Miss Daisy, you can write your question in the chat box or maybe you can raise your hand and and give your question to them. Uh, before before that, I think to the all participant, don't forget to fill the acceptance the attendance yes, uh, about your participants in webinar today. Okay, and we have uh, another question, or oh, maybe from Pambudi. Maybe it uh, another question to Dr. Adira. Yeah, I want to. I want to tell it what I see nowadays. There are AR is quite often used game application. Is there any opinion? Uh, op sorry, is there any option that use AR instead of game application, or do we do we can see more example? Do creative industry use the AR for creative media or art? Okay, the time is your Dr. Alira. Hi, thank you, Pambudi, for your question. Actually, uh, the AR is not just for game application. There are a few other uh, industry that are using AR technology, like I said just now. Uh, in retail, for example, we can use it for people to try on uh, our products using AR technology before they purchase. Uh, the product, like trying to trying to wear uh, dresses, trying to wear sunglasses, for uh, for example, and then uh, also in uh, medical uh, industry, yeah, they they starting to use uh, AR uh, technology as well in medical and also in uh, tourism. Uh, uh, industry, like I said, now for uh, location-based AR, and then we also have like uh, also in education. Yes, in education we have AR. For example, we want to see. For example, we learn about science, right? In science classes, we use AR technology to see the real. For example, we want to see the human body. But uh, we can use the uh, the phone, and then we can the uh, uh, human bones in the textbook, and then we can see the real uh, uh, human bones in our phone, and then we can uh, flip it around to see three D three uh, D form of the human body. Uh, also, in 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 classroom education, we can use AR. Uh, not just not just in games, but games is popular because uh, we have a lot of people are uh, excited to play AR games, and not also, not not just in uh, augmented reality, we also have in virtual reality games as well. Uh, all right, and then business uh, modeling, designing, and modeling uh, industry uh, using uh, the apps as well. Okay, Pambudi, thank you for all your question. I hope I answer your 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 question. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Alira. A good question, I think. <laughs> okay, we can move the next question from Firik. Okay, I want to read it. I really love your concept of considering values when you create a product. What's the worst thing to it? At McDonald's, I think this question uh, want to ask to Miss Daisy. Maybe Miss Daisy can give your response. Yeah. So I will repeat the the questions. Uh. So um, Virek, he say he she say that um he loves my concept of considering values when creating a product. But the question is, what is the worst thing to eat at McDonald's? So it's a bit, little bit personal and personal preference. So um, from from my remembers, because I'm I'm just came back to Vietnam for more than one year, and it's the pandemic already. So um, 
I don't think there's a new McDonald's store in Vietnam, but um, in my city, we don't have McDonald's. So I only try McDonald's when I was in Australia and I try only one item. So sorry that I cannot answer that question. The, what is the worst thing to eat in McDonald's? This really depends on your personal taste and um, the region the region that you are growing up, maybe it's more veggie oriented or more meat oriented. So you will have a very variety of choice. Thank you. Okay, thank you. This is from the experience of uh, Miss Daisy experience, I think. Yes. <laughs> I think every person have, okay. uh, have personal experience. Okay, and the next question from Ivan Dian to Dr. Azira. What do you think about the app's development in art and creativity? Do you think it will make people less creative because everything is done by apps like Canva, Snapcam, or maybe etc.? Um, yeah, the time is your Dr. Alira. Okay, uh, thank you, Yuvan Dian. Uh, before that, I was uh, quite uh, interested with the previous question by Virik. Uh, what is your worst thing to eat at McDonald's? I think I, I please type your your worst thing that you have tasted. I also want to know about it. <laughs> okay, uh, for even the end question, uh, yes. Um, there's a lot of apps and uh, that have been developed because we have this uh, technology always evolve every day, right? But uh, I, do, I think, yeah, maybe it will make people a bit lazy uh, to, mm. to, to create new... Um, maybe they will be uh, lazy and, and maybe also they will be... Um, because when we have these uh, apps, we can try to uh, think out of the box on how to really use that application, okay? Uh, and then people with the, the, for example, like me, I have a design background, so uh, I love to use Canva and Snapcam, something like that. Uh, but uh, for those who don't have the design background, it really helps them to, for example, to create their slides, for example, for the students, maybe uh, students from uh, business background, okay, for, and then they want to pitch their ideas to the to the uh, company, for example. So they need to have a very uh, outstanding slide. So this kind of application like Canva and everything will help them uh, to do a nice uh, slide presentation. So uh, I don't think that uh, it will make it will make people less creative because you still need to use your creativity uh, to create it. Uh, not uh, uh, because uh, it doesn't happen just like that for a very nice uh, slide presentation, right? So you need you still need to put your creativity into it. Which uh, which color do you want to use? For example, which uh, I uh, which uh, shapes. Uh, that are suitable for your products and something like that. Uh, so, I think uh, application that have been developed uh, helping people to 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 create more creative things. All right, Ivan, Ivan Dian, thank you for your question. <laughs> okay. Maybe we also uh, as a designer we can uh, be creative to create more application that can help people, that can make something uh, uh, that exists to make it more cooler, more uh, more amazing, more outstanding. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Adira. Uh, I will move to the another question, but I think interest to us to... to Sorry, I think before I read the next question, I think uh, Dr. Herman Fellay maybe uh, have many response about the question from Ivan. Yeah. 
Thank you, Rizky. Uh, I'm interested with the presentation from uh, Daisy when talking about the locality aspect. Uh, you know, when uh, 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 when when you, for example, the case of McDonald in Vietnam. Okay, I, I remember in Da Nang there's no McDonald. There's one Starbucks, but I think it's already closing or, or something. No one is really interested to go there. I think only foreigners, but. If you go to Vietnam, I think don't go to Starbucks. <laughs> you need to go to a local Vietnamese uh, coffee shop. Very nice. Uh, I remember my experience uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. Dr. Azira uh, remind me about it. In Ho Chi Minh City, there there is a McDonald's next to the post office. I think uh, the Benson Market, but they the, the design of the building is not like McDonald's at all because they use. A very, I think it's a very Vietnamese style, and it, it's also close to the to the Church of Notre Dame. I think it's it's a part of the French uh, architecture. But I really like the concept, uh, how the locality actually uh, is maintained, you know, in terms of architecture and also ornaments and everything. And I don't see like a big sign or big uh, billboard in 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 in. Ho Chi Minh, for example, and also in Danang, which for me, I think it's good. Not like, for example, in Indonesia, we see a lot of, we call it visual trash <laughs> everywhere, big billboard, and all of the design of the restaurant, for example, the same, for example, McDonald's is the same all over the place. But in Vietnam, it's different. So, you know, is it also influence of the, the government policy, uh, they see, or it's, it's merely because the local people don't like something which is not, uh, uh, familiar with their culture or history. And yes. So, okay. Yeah. Are you finished? Yes. Done. Yeah. Okay. So um, I could say that culture is the, the man influenced me. So even we are all Vietnamese people, we have different cultures. So people from the north who different from the central and from the south. So Ho Chi Minh is located in the south of Vietnam. And those people, they are really open, open to new experience. So for the international brand who want to expand in Vietnam, they always choose Ho Chi Minh City at their first place as they are really open and they welcome new experience. However, to be really like sustainable in the long term, in the long run in Vietnam, in some certain extent you have to like being calculated, calculated with the Vietnamese culture, you have to change a little bit in the menus, maybe more veggies or yeah, or some things like that. As in um, in Vietnam, we growing up with vegetable and rice, we're not growing up with bread. So um, McDonald's, I believe that they are doing a little bit things in uh, changing the menu items. What about the influence from the like there's like regulation from the government they see because yesterday we had a very nice webinar also with UUM talking about how the the state actually play influence to you know to to preserve the culture mm -hmm. about, you know? so I think for the government for the political side they are only have like a little bit the level of powers like to control the design and stuff because in um, in Vietnam, we are developing countries. We are in the internalization process. So we open and we welcome all the international players in our market. And also because of uh, Vietnam is located, the very, I think we are very, in the very perfect location. So um, we are very seasized countries. Mm. So that's why many international players want to invade their market in Vietnam. So our government, they only do a little bit control on the uh, entrance. Thank you, Daisy. Mm. Thank you, Amin. And I hope okay. to welcome you to Ho Chi Minh City again when the COVID-19 is over. Okay, thank you, Miss Daisy. I think we can move to the last question because we w we because we are now in the end of the session I think. And the last question from Kim Dan. 
for ma for Miss Daisy. I just wonder why Lazada come to VN first, but nowadays Shopee is more popular than Lazada. Even Shopee and Lazada have the same campaign such as 11-11, birthday, birthday or sale day. Mm -hmm. Maybe you you can give your response. Yes, it's a very interesting question. So as I mentioned in my sharing, good timing is really important. Even Lazada came to Vietnam first. At this stage, we we have no experience with the e-commerce, so we're not familiar with Lazada and stuff. So, but when Shopee came to Vietnam, so at this stage, e-commerce is the trend, and Shopee was uh, Shopee did a great job at the very beginning stage. So they do very well on the promotion and stuff but for now they are not competing on price anymore because e-commerce would be the future of shopping so now to be more sustainable in the market they have something with their business strategy so for Shopee they focus on more more on the user experience they invest heavily on the user interface and user interactions and that is the most thing attracts the uh, the young people, the targeted audience for e-commerce market. And then um, also, I would like to mention about the habitual shopping, like the shopping habit. So uh, similar to Apple, huh? oh no, Android and iOS. When you are so familiar with iOS, you don't want to switch to the Samsung or other brand. Of, uh, I, uh, of the phone, you will go with the Apple as you don't want to change your habit. And the same case apply to Shopee. When people, they are more familiar with the user interface of Shopee, when they go to Lazada or they switch to another brand, they're not familiar with the shopping experience. And when we're talking about habit, so it's difficult to change a person's habit. Mm, so that's the main point. Okay, thank you, Medici, about your answer. And I think um, it's the interesting question because we are now always in online shop. If we if we want to shop, if you or buy something. Okay. Uh, before I close the session, I think the stu the participant will fill the upset, fill the atten attendance in the chat box, and I think Dr. Alira or Miss Daisy maybe can give us uh, some closing statement before I closing this webinar. Okay. Maybe firstly, I I give time and space to Dr. Alira. Something closing oh, okay. statement. Um, thank you, Rizky. Uh, what I can say uh, to all the students today is that uh, good luck for your project. Uh, use your creativity to uh, create something that will be that will inspire the, the creative world. And uh, you will be having uh, your mentor, so don't be afraid to ask your mentor if there's anything, any issues that you uh, you are encountering. So uh, always communicate because we are uh, far from each other. So always communicate uh, in the WhatsApp group or anything, and participate with all the mentoring session. And um, I think that's all. And good luck. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Alira. And I have, a, sorry, and I give the time and space to Miss Daisy to give something to about closing statement to us. Yeah, so um, I wish that you will enjoy the P2A program. You will learn new things, have uh, good friends, and achieve good results on your final project and especially get close to the passage to ASEAN. 
Oke, okay, interesting. Oke, okay, before uh, before I close this meeting, I hope uh, to all participants to open your camera because we have a documentation session, ya, yeah, for for report about our project. Yes. Oke, okay. maybe to the all participant uh, open, open your, your camera. Yes. I wanna look your handsome and beautiful face. Wow. Yes. Because you are is good, I think. Everyone in okay, this everyone. session is good people. Okay. Open the camera first. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. Is it enough? Uh, once again, once again. Once again. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you for you all. Thank you, Dr. Azira. Thank you, Miss Daisy. Nice to meet you. I hope we can meet you in another time, in another space. Maybe not only in the internet. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Thank you for you all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, this is Uh, closing closing session for me. Yes. Thank you to Mr. Kika, uh, Mr. Rizka, and I Mr. give <laughs> time and space to Ms. Kika, okay. Ms. Rizka. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay. You. Thank you, Mr. Rizki, for your uh, moderation. Thank you, Okay, we are almost reaching at the end at the end of this webinar. I'd like to say thank you for Dr. Azira. Dr. Azira Hussein and Ms. Dudesi uh, who have explained about AR Convo Photo and the rule of right people message time. Uh, and thank you again to Mr. Rizky uh, who have moderated this webinar. Uh, okay, uh, and I don't forget to say thank you to all participants for web webinar uh, P2A Ice Cream. Uh, and before we close, there is an uh, announcement from Mr. Herman, from Mr. Herman and Mrs. Ida, maybe. And also, we'll be closing on this webinar. Uh, Mr. Herman and Mrs. Ida, the time and screens are yours. Thank you very much. Again, we would like to thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azira. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, Dr. Azira. Thank you, Miss Daisy. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you, Mom. And the product of the P2A ice cream will invite you for the awarding event and also the exhibition. See you. Thank you so much. Have an ice day. Yeah. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you, Daisy. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Azira. So, everyone, we will continue after this. We are going to have the meeting with the group. Dr. Satria, our partner from Advanced Jakarta. Uh, Dr. Satria is with us too. And uh, good news, Dr. Azira, we have a new co-host. So we have been seeing you in the UM, And now we have another co-host from uh, the Universitas Katolik from Atmajaya Jakarta. And I would like to say hi to friends from Atmajaya. Are you here, guys? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, students from Cambodia, are you here? You can raise hand. You